that is visible, but most of it is behind the scenes. And in, in the rest of society, it's also largely behind the scenes. You buy a car now, and most cars have a, a little camera looking at the yeah. windshield, and the car will break automatically if there is an obstacle yeah. in front, right? That's called automatic emergency braking system. Yeah. Think you know all about AI? Think again. AI algorithms are designed to make our lives easier. However, there seems to be a rising trend of poorly monitored algorithms that are making life worse for humans. In this video, we explore some of the most heartbreaking stories of algorithms gone wrong, and in some cases, a danger to human life. Number seven, gender discrimination and bias in AI. Sasha is one of the many transgender people who suffer discrimination in what should be a routine check at millimeter wave scanners in airports. During this check, the personnel is required to select a gender on their screen. In Sasha's case, if the male gender is selected, her breasts are larger than the average male body shape, and that triggers the alarm systems of the algorithm. On the flip side, when they select the female option, her groin region is not statistically within the norm of female biology. As expected, this will also raise flags in the system. The machine regards Sasha and other transgender people like her as a threat solely because of their appearance. Agents of the TSA have her removed from the line before frisking her, touching her all around as other travelers watch. Based on a survey conducted by the National Center for Transgender Equality, above 40% of transgender travelers have been victims of airport security discrimination. The algorithm has been taught to see genders only a certain way, so anyone who does not fit into its rules is flagged as high risk. Despite how long this has gone on, agents continue to treat trans travelers as security risks. And even worse, the algorithm has not been improved to understand these cases. So where do we draw the line for how much dependence we have on AI algorithms? Well, it gets worse, so sit tight. Number six, AI in decision-making. How much AI do you think is involved in the decisions that affect you? The answer to that may just be way more than you think. Whether in banking, commercial applications, or even law enforcement, as we shall soon see, algorithms have replaced humans in major decision-making situations. The expectation is to remove the strain of human bias that may come with decision-making. Unfortunately, these algorithms are designed in labs, away from the real-world places where they will eventually be used, and fed data based on the preference of the developers. Upon development, these models are released to police departments, airports, as mentioned earlier, banks, schools, and so much more. People are consistently classified and categorized on a daily basis in some of the most important facets of their lives, by an algorithm that was trained without a proper understanding of real-world situations. A bigger problem is that most of the organizations in charge of the deployment of these systems are never completely transparent enough to release the parameters with which their models have been trained. This, then, means that we are being made to put blind faith in the promise that these machines are in fact objective and free of human bias. However, there is increasing evidence to show that algorithms are not as flawless as promised. The next story is a perfect representation of an AI algorithm that got it all wrong. Number five, domestic violence and AI. In 2004, the Spanish authorities introduced an algorithm called Viogen. At a time when violence against women was at an all-time high, the AI algorithm was here to save the day and lives. Or at least it was expected to. The system would analyze based on 37 variables, like a record of violence, the vulnerability of the victim, her children, and the characteristics of the offender. After the analysis, the algorithm will decide if there is no perceived risk, a low risk, medium, high, or extreme risk. Under better circumstances, this would be an amazing tool that would help law enforcement function faster and keep women safe from abusers. However, a poorly trained algorithm combined with officers and judges who were unwilling to take a closer look at a situation because of the verdict of a machine resulted in avoidable loss of lives. In 2018, Itziar walked into a police station to report her abusive husband. She had an audio recording that revealed a death threat made by her husband on her life and that of her daughters. Standard procedure was then for the officer to ask a set of questions based on the provision made by Viogen, and then input the answers into the system. After all the questions were answered, the system returned a result that deemed Itzar's case a low-risk situation. Itzar tried to take her husband to court and have him banned from seeing their daughters. Unfortunately, the judge did not care to listen to the facts of the case. Rather, he gave a judgment based on the low-risk verdict of Viogen. Itzar's request was denied. Within seven months of this judgment, 
The two daughters, Nerea and Martina, were murdered in their sleep by their father before he killed himself. This is just one of the several other cases that have ended in the murder of women or children after the algorithm had considered them low risk. Number four, educational opportunities and AI. Here is where more evidence points to the fact that AI is definitely not as objective as it has been painted to be. France's Ministry of Education introduced AI into its higher education admission process in 2018 called Parcours Soup. The idea was to create a more transparent process that allowed the very best students to get the best admission offers from the best universities. But in keeping with the theme of this video, this algorithm was not as fair as promised. The first big flaw in this algorithm is in its design. There are about 17,000 higher education programs listed on the platform. With such a large pool, students who will generally have trouble navigating their applications on their own, and applicants who do not have strong academic backgrounds also suffer the most. But it gets worse. Under normal circumstances, applicants who have the best scores start getting offers in May before other students. However, several stories of students who had stellar grades but no admission offers started to pop up. Now, here's where the problem lies. There are two sides to the algorithm. On one hand, students are matched to universities depending on their preferences. The criteria are open and accessible to all. However, on the flip side, there is another algorithm that the universities use to select the ranking of applicants. The criteria for this selection are not public. Applicants have to go in blind without knowing what exactly the universities are looking for. Unfortunately, students from less privileged backgrounds tend to constantly get ignored, no matter how good their grades are. And just when pressure started mounting on the ministry to reveal the back end of the algorithm that decides applicants' ranking, the French Ministry of Education introduced a new rule that did not make it compulsory to reveal this information. Just another sad example of humans depending so heavily on an algorithm, regardless of glaring evidence of flaws in the system. And there is more. Number three, social media algorithms and mental health. With an estimated 4.8 billion social media users in 2023, Social media algorithms possibly pose the most global threat on today's list. Social media algorithms are designed to keep users on the platforms for as long as possible, and this has now become a great danger to the health and minds of the predominantly younger demographic using these platforms. A perfect example would be this 17-year-old from Germany who developed an eating disorder as a result of the algorithm. It all started with regular K-pop videos, but for the algorithm to maintain a chokehold of the young mind, it sucked her into a filter bubble. Many teenagers spend so much time watching videos of people who have the perfect body, hence they develop anorexia. In the end, these young viewers continue to come back to the platform to find videos about low-calorie recipes that would help them attain these physiques. The sad reality is that most of these teenagers end up suffering from eating disorders and other health issues. The more time these viewers and consumers spend on the platform, the more money the companies make. Since the algorithm picks up on the pattern that frightened or depressed users are more likely to spend more time on their devices, it will continue to show content that feeds this fear. Number two, surveillance and profiling. All in the name of national security, most governments in developed nations are known for implementing surveillance algorithms that profile people. The goal is to pick out potential terrorists and murderers before they wreak havoc on society. What could go wrong? In a bid to reduce the risk of school shooters, the Violence Prevention Center in Zurich, Switzerland started using an algorithm to pick out potential school shooters. This involved the constant profiling of students that even remotely stood out. These were students with no criminal history, and most of them were barely involved in anything violent. However, simply because the algorithm matched them with the same profile as other global school shooters, the students were put through interrogation. The algorithm released a group of 35 questions, and based on the students' answers, the algorithm would decide if they were a threat or not. If the algorithm decided that the students were security threats, the students were immediately handed over to the police. While the developers claim that the system was designed using a global survey of school shooters worldwide, nothing is said about how it comes to the specific students that it picks. Very often, this could affect the mental well-being of school children, as well as lead to even worse cases of profiling and false accusation. Number one, child benefit scandal in the Netherlands. This one really sums up some of the greatest dangers that AI algorithms have posed to the humans it was designed to aid. To make a long story short, certain low-income families in the Netherlands started randomly receiving letters saying they owed thousands of dollars in taxes. How? 
Parents who had received childcare benefits over time were now being asked to refund years of backlog of child benefit payments. Experts who tried to investigate the situation found an estimated 9,000 case files that had gone missing or been destroyed. However, the refund letters continued to spread across thousands of mailboxes in the country. Unfortunately for these families, an algorithm had been running in the background and picking them out as fraudulent cases. The tax authorities started using a risk management algorithm in 2013. However, a huge flaw in the algorithm was that it automatically flagged non-Dutch citizens or people with dual citizenship as potentially fraudulent. These families never got their day in court or a listening ear to defend themselves against these claims. And the more the algorithm was allowed to consistently flag these innocent people for fraud, the worse it got. No accountability, no transparency, and worst of all, no fairness. All in a bid to follow an algorithm. If you have made it this far, comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, subscribe and check out this video on your screen that I've selected just for you. Thanks for watching.